So when you have a um, double integral, maybe um, in Cartesian coordinates, it's very complicated to do, but in polar coordinates, it will be much simpler to do. So to do that, we need to change variables in the integral from a double integral in Cartesian coordinates to a double integral in polar coordinates. So that's called a change of variables formula. Um, in order for you to have a better understanding of uh, how it works when we have double and triple integrals, I thought I would have uh, an extra video and show you how it works for single integrals, something you know in single variable calculus, and it's called uh, substitution. Okay, so let's work the change of variables formula for single integrals. So let's say in general we're doing an integral from some initial value of x, x naught, to some final value of x, xf, of some function f of x dx. And maybe f of x is difficult to do uh, in uh, this variable x, and we want to change variables. So that's what we call substitution in single variable calculus. So we let, say, uh, x equals some function of s as a new variable, and then dx is equal to u prime of s ds. So that's the typical substitution formula. So then we get i is equal to the integral. So instead of f as a function of x, we have f as a function of u of s, so f becomes a function of s, and dx becomes u prime of s ds. And in the case where u, say, is an invertible function, then we need to change the limits of integration. So x naught, the initial value of s, then would be the inverse function u inverse of x naught, and the final value of s would be u inverse of x f. Okay? This is the standard substitution. So there are uh, three pieces here. The first piece is the integrand. So instead of having the integrand as a function of x, we now made the integrand a function of s. And that's usually the reason to do this in single variable calculus, because f of x is too complicated to, integral, to integrate, so we do a substitution. The uh, second piece, is this u prime of s ds. That's a transformation of the dx. So in the double integral, we're going to have to transform dx dy. Okay, it's a little bit more complicated than just transforming dx. And then finally, the third piece is changing the limits of integration. Uh, in the double integral, we're integrating over some area. We're going to have to figure out how to change the limit of that. So the, uh, this is how it works for single variable calculus. I think to be more explicit, I can look at a particular example. So let's calculate, say, the area of a circle using uh, one integral. Uh, let me draw the, the graph. So um, instead of uh, finding the area of a whole surface, a whole circle, we can find the area of a quarter of a circle and multiply by four. So let's say this is the quarter of a circle. So the uh, radius can be capital R. Okay, this is our uh, x. This is our y-axis. This. Uh, uh, Function, this, uh, this is a function of uh, x, so we can uh, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So y here is equal to the square root of r squared minus x squared. Okay? If we want to integrate to find the area here, we can like, do a Riemann sum that looks something like this. Okay. So how do we write the integral? So if we want to find the area of the circle, so let me write that A of the circle, it's four times the area 
of this quarter circle, so it's four times, and then it's the integral of uh, the y of x dx, so it's the integral of the square root of r squared minus x squared dx, and then x goes from uh, zero here, right, up to capital R, the radius. Okay, so it's this integral to do. Um, typically then you would do this integral through a substitution. Uh, here I can just let x equals uh, r cosine theta, okay, kind of like a polar coordinate for x, and then uh, dx will be minus r sine theta d theta, so that will be our substitution. So then we will get uh, the area of the circle is equal to 4 times the integral. So r squared minus x squared is r squared minus r squared cosine squared theta, r squared minus x squared, square root. dx is minus r sine theta d theta, right? And then the limit, so when x equals 0, then uh, what is the value of theta? Then theta, when x equals 0, theta will be pi over 2. So the lower limit is pi over 2. Uh, when x is equal to capital R, cosine theta will be 1, so theta will be 0. So the limits here kind of get flipped, but the minus sign will flip it back. So if we write this out, we can factor out an r here. We can factor out an r. The minus sign can flip the limits. So we have uh, r times an r. So we have 4r squared. And then we have the integral from 0 to pi over 2. And we have the square root of 1 minus cosine squared theta times sine theta d theta. Okay, it's just an exercise in single variable calculus. This is a sine theta, so this is 4r squared times the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of sine squared theta d theta. And uh, this integral uh, has to be one quarter times uh, pi because we know the area of the circle is pi r squared. Okay? You can look up this integral or you can do it using uh, the double angle formula. Okay, so this was what you already know from single variable calculus. You know it's called substitution. Here I'm going to claim that I'm going to call this a change of variables formula. The important thing here that we're going to have to carry over for the double integral and then the triple integral is that this dx gets transformed to u prime s ds, right? So s then becomes the new variable. So we need to consider now in the double integral case how to transform dx dy. I'm Jeff Chasnov. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.